Um, I'd like to now pass it to Dabla Sharma to give us a, a demonstration of Zscaler digital experience. Thank you, Sanjit, and thank you everyone uh, for participating in the panel. In the next 15 minutes, I'll, my intent is to walk you through what is Zscaler digital experience and how it works, and then show you a quick demo of the capabilities. So without wasting any further time, let me quickly share my screen and walk you through some of the uh, use cases that we are going to walk through today. So uh, when you think about digital experience and you're, as you have, know Zscaler, one of the key thing we have built in Zscaler or solution area is uh, modern workplace enablement, which essentially means uh, aligned with the broader work from anywhere philosophy. Key goal here is to improve productivity and reduce business risk. So your employees are secure through Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange. ZIA makes sure internet traffic is protected and ZPA ensures employees connect to private applications securely. Another key tenet of modern workplace enablement is greater user experience. If you provide great security at expense of user experience, as we heard from our panelists, your end users are going to be unhappy. So this is why we built a massive cloud footprint to not only provide secure access to application, but also fastest access to these application that your employees are using for day-to-day -day business. And ZDX provides a consistent view of your employee's user experience through a scoring framework, which we call as ZDX score. When Z ZDX score is bad, you can actually look at the underlying uh, metrics that could be causing uh, user experience issues. It's a score which is comp computed between zero to 100. When uh, a bad score also can lead you to underlying metrics to determine what is causing bad score. Score also provides a real-time indication of systematic problems or a localized problem, which then could be diagnosed further using live troubleshooting capabilities that we have in ZDX. Uh, so score typically for a digital experience perspective depends on three variables. And the three variables are application, networking, and endpoint. From an application perspective, it is important to do an end-to-end -end monitoring of app performance, looking at behavior of application. For example, ability to generate alerts, which can uh, uh, be triggered when certain thresholds are triggered. For example, for uh, most common web-based internet applications, uh, page fetch time is a good indicator. So if page fetch time for a web application is going to X, definitely there's a, a, some uh, event that is causing it. Uh, for example, for the voice application, a page fetch time not, is not a relevant metric. We can have that uh, scoring based on something like a MOS score. In addition to application, uh, you also look at network from every single user's device as, as well, not from certain vantage point or in a data center or in provider's network, because every user is unique. In today's world, everyone is working from home. There are so many issues that happen on the first mile, example, local Wi-Fi router at the home or latency on the corporate LAN or uh, on the first mile itself. And finally, the endpoint. Uh, these are the devices that users are using. So if there is an operating system upgrade or a uh, software upgrade that has happened, which has caused CPU spike, uh, which is now consuming more cycles on your network interface, uh, for example, that could impact the user experience as well. So bringing these three views together is really important. So when you bring these views together, as you can see on the dashboard on the left, uh, you can see a global view of all your employees across the globe for all key applications you care for, uh, whether internal or external application. You can use EDX score for users or an application or uh, for a location. Our agent provides location of every single user, which is then aggregated at a geo level, uh, or you can see it at entire organization level as well. When scores are not looking good, like you can see in this example, the global salesforce.com score was bad. When I took this screenshot, there was actually an issue going on with Salesforce due to which our corporate tenant was impacted. You can click here and see the underlying cause of that issue and run the live troubleshooting uh, scenarios as well. We have talked a lot about scoring as in scoring is different from traditional monitoring tools, which are based on a defining thresholds. We actually take a baselining based approach and I'll talk about it when I do a demo. Uh, you, when score is bad, you can drill and uh, see some of the underlying metrics. And this slide gives you an idea about what those some of, some of those underlying metrics are. If you are from a network or an endpoint team, you will appreciate the, some of the metrics we are talking about here. From, as I mentioned, from an application perspective, uh, when we think about web application, page fetch time is a good indicator, but for voice application, 
we uh, are going to use FOSS score. But there are other underlying metrics like server response time, DNS resolution time, or availability of the application itself that are, that are being monitored as well, and we provide time series data for that. From network perspective, we look at every single hop on the data path, including uh, the egress from the user's home, uh, upstream uh, ISPs that Zscaler is using in their data center. We provide you AS number, ISP information of every single hop that gives you a good idea whether your traffic is uh, routed well or sometimes it is suboptimally routed and adding latency on the data path or there's more packet loss on the data path. If you're going through Zscaler for internet security uh, or private access, we would also show you our own cloud hops. And if Zscaler is causing an issue, we'll highlight that as well. From an endpoint perspective, we look at time series usage of CPU memory disk, but also critical device events. For example, if your device restarted or flipped to a different Wi-Fi network, we can correlate that with the uh, drop in the application score. So bringing that single pane of glass from an endpoint network uh, an application perspective is something that ZDX provides to you. So the next question is, how does this work and how do I deploy it? Actually, it is the simplest product to deploy if you are already a Zscaler customer and you have deployed our client connector. That, uh, so uh, we have built the instrumentation for ZDX uh, into our client connector, which you already are using for ZIA and ZPS service. It can work without these services as well, but if you are a customer who has already deployed our services, it becomes much easier. Beyond that, all it takes is to enable a few monitoring profiles for key applications, for which we also provide pre-built templates in the product. And the uh, moment you enable these monitoring probes, our client on user's computer would start sending these probes to the application with full user context as our agent is already authenticated. One of the major advantage of deploying ZDS is to uh, not use another monitoring tool or agent on the user device. And it literally has less than 1% impact on the user's device, uh, uh, like resource usage. So you can choose to deploy it either for your entire organization or you can deploy it by uh, group by group in your AD. And uh, end users uh, data will start getting captured and you can start seeing uh, rich telemetry being created within a couple of hours after deploying ZDX. So this was a high level overview of what ZDX and how it works. At this point, I would like to flip to a live demo and we'll come back to summarize the, some of the unique differentiation that we see with ZDX. So I'm going to uh, share my screen and I'm gonna uh, dig into Zscaler's corporate tenant where we have all these employees coming through, uh, data coming through our uh, ZDX system. So as you can see, uh, I have, uh, I'm looking at a four hour window and all the key applications that we actually uh, care from a Zscaler uh, perspective that our employees use for day-to-day -day work are being monitored here. This include uh, common SaaS applications like Box, Salesforce, Microsoft Teams, or uh, even your internal application like a Jira server that is running in our data center. Now you can see that this is the global view. The ZDX score for our internal Jira servers is pretty low. This is due to the fact that we are performing some maintenance on it and uh, all the employees that are based out of various parts of US are impacted, but employees who are in India are uh, still able to access it. Uh, but when, when you have these kind of uh, outage or uh, scenarios where the majority of users are impacted, these are easier to understand. The real hard problem comes when a specific user is getting impacted uh, due to on, a, on an application on which otherwise there's a good score and your SaaS provider is not providing good visibility. So let's take example of Microsoft Teams, for example. So Teams score looks pretty healthy. As you can see, Teams experience across the globe looks pretty good as well. I was uh, talking to one of our employees who's based in Washington, Oregon. Uh, he was telling me he was on call with our client uh, today morning on Teams and he's seeing issues where he was not able to connect. He, he did some diagnostics on network and everything looked good. Now, uh, one thing you can uh, see on uh, ZDX console is that you can look at the global view, but you can quickly drill down into a specific geo or a user level view. We provide user search capability. So you can search for a given user. I can search myself and I can go to my specific view here by just clicking here, or I can start at a geo level view. Since our agent is providing latitude, longitude information from the device, we can actually see where the users are coming from. So this specific user is based in Washington, DC. So let me, uh, in Washington, Oregon so area. So <clears throat> if I look in Washington, I have about 13 Zscaler employees coming from here and uh, score looks pretty average at this point. And I want to see who all these users are. 
And if this specific user, Clint, who reached out to me is actually having bad score for Microsoft Teams. And uh, Clint's overall score for Microsoft Teams is actually pretty bad. It's about in uh, less than uh, 20, actually. So I can click here and I can start seeing what exactly is happening in Clint's scenario. What uh, could be the underlying cause of this bad score? So first of all, ZDX gives you the device level view. So I can click, I can see Clint is using a couple of devices here. I can click on this device to see more details, like what kind of device he is, what kind of network he's connected to, what version of software he's using, et cetera. All that detail is here in a device level view. But, uh, and I can uh, add other applications also and see what is the performance of other applications from his perspective since we are focusing on Teams. So I'll uh, just go through that. Uh, you can see that his team score is consistently bad. And what I observed here is that the underlying metric, the page fetch time over here, is uh, uh, running in about 1500 milliseconds to go to the front door of team application. Uh, I did look up it, uh, look it up earlier. What I realized is that for a regular user coming from US West Coast or from Washington region, the typical page fetch time value is about 300 milliseconds. So his page fetch time value is definitely very high and so is the server response time, which essentially means that uh, DNS looks pretty good if I look at the values here, uh, less than 50 milliseconds, application is available. I can also do the full network path trace and see how he's connecting to, uh, to Microsoft Teams from his home. This is another key advantage of ZDX. We provide you hop by hop view, as I mentioned. I can look at every single hop in the data uh, on the data path and see what is the packet loss latency on that and how this user is connected to Zscaler. Overall latency for this user is less than 50 milliseconds, which is well below what Microsoft recommends for connecting to Teams. So it definitely is not a network path problem. I also looked at his uh, device utilization like CPU, memory, uh, et cetera. That looks pretty healthy at this point. I don't, I didn't find an outlier event though. He had some device events like his network interface is flipping. Uh, bringing all this additional telemetry context is important to understand when something is going wrong. Here, the most like, uh, underlying cause is that uh, there is a slowness on the application side to uh, respond here, which is causing slowness for this user. Now, uh, as I was looking at his data, another interesting thing here is that uh, at this point, his Wi-Fi signal strength started dropping. So I can click here where his strength has dropped and can see what was there an event that is causing this uh, drop in the Wi-Fi signal strength? And I do see that at this point, he's actually uh, flipping to a different uh, Wi-Fi network, uh, which is causing uh, or a different band on the Wi-Fi going from, uh, which would cause slowness in his overall experience as well. And when a user is having a problem, what I can also do is I can start a deep tracing or a live troubleshooting session which essentially can start doing more aggressive polling and start collecting telemetry data based on which I can create a report. And uh, I can then uh, use this report to share with my networking team or my or with Microsoft team to make sure they can dig deeper into it. So uh, what you saw in the demo is started with a global view, then I could drill down into a geo specific view to an application view and then figure out where the pro what is exactly causing the problem from a specific user perspective. In addition to that, we can all, we have also a full alerting framework. So you can set thresholds for alerting. And then when those thresholds are triggered, for example, I have a, I see that I have a Salesforce latency issue going on where about 75 geolocation and 110 devices across these killer ecosystem are impacted. And I can get this integrated with the ITSM tool like ServiceNow and my, I, my uh, service desk can uh, be made aware. So when uh, a user is, going to raise a ticket, they will have context from ZDX already coming. So bring the proactive aspect of monitoring into the picture as well. With that, I'll uh, actually flip back to the presentation. Uh, there, uh, one more scenario that I uh, took a screenshot earlier and I'll walk you through is basically baselining the performance between office and the uh, home user. So some of our customers as people are coming back to office are basically trying to baseline user experience working from home versus working from the office. This is an example where we see much worse performance working from the office due to a flaky T1 connection and a legacy security architecture, uh, which uh, was causing slowness of the user's data path to come out to Zscaler. From home, employees can go directly to Z, uh, internet through Zscaler and hence they were having better performance. So you see, the page fetch time values are much lower when they're working from home, barring a specific incident when there was a Verizon outage in that issue. But in the office, their performance was much worse. So these were a few examples. Uh, in our, uh, to summarize, uh, 
to wrap up the session, ZDX key differentiation includes that it is built on the same global, highly scalable Z scalar SASE platform with uh, data ingested from every single user, normalized on the endpoint, and then sent to ingestion and analytics engine that is built with modern big data uh, based technology. You cannot do monitoring of end user experience without instrumenting monitoring from every device, which must be tied to their identity and lo location information. Context-driven monitoring is something that you are able to set up with ZDX without much sweat. Uh, in today's world, monitoring stats are as important to network team as they are to security. So, uh, and also think about workspace teams and network operations teams. Zscaler brings a single pane of glass uh, with its converged security and monitoring stack. And finally, we have a unified agent, and we would not ask your users to install a plugin or into your browser or yet another agent or a virtual machine. We provide the ability to see data path as actual users traffic goes through, not from a dummy monitoring VM in a data center. With that, I'll wrap up my session and pass it on to Sanjit for closing comments. Thank you, Dawal. And actually, we have a question from the audience. Um, someone is asking, um, I am a current Zscaler customer and I have the client connector. What, what steps do I need to take to, to actually turn this uh, product on and get this, this data that you were showing? Yeah, uh, so as I was explaining at a high level, it's fairly simple for our existing customers to enable ZDX. Talk to your account team and get your trial license, which would essentially uh, in, allow you to do a selective entitlement for ZDX in your tenant. So you can say that certain sub subset of users, uh, let's say Active Directory group of test users who are from the IT team are enabled with ZDX. And then you can go to the ZDX console and uh, there are some base uh, monitoring profiles already pre-configured, you enable them and the monitoring data will start getting collected. And you can come back to the ZDX console within a couple of hours to start seeing telemetry data and uh, 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 that would start working in less, within less than 24 hours, you will have enough data to see the value of ZDX. Uh, Perfect, thank you so much, Dawa. Well, many thanks uh, to Paul and Eric for uh, sharing your, your real world experiences and Dawa for, for the wonderful demonstration. And a thank you to everyone attending today's session. If you missed any part of this or wish to rewatch it, you can visit cxosummit.zscaler.com and we'll be posting the recording very soon. We wanna continue the conversation. So let's not, let's not end here. Please um, join your IT leadership peers in the private Zscaler CXO community on LinkedIn, where you can engage with like-minded innovators and learn secure digital transformation best practices. You can also visit the new CXO Revolutionaries website for practical and actionable insights from working secure digital transformation experts. So from all of us here at Zscaler, take care, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you at our global CXO Summit on October 20th. Thank you very much.